Hello everyone, welcome to an academy. This is Ashwat. This lesson is the part 2 of endocrine glands and hormones. In this lesson, we will see the remaining glands, endocrine glands and hormones that are not been covered in the first part. Coming to the lesson, adrenal gland. This adrenal gland are present on the anterior part of each kidney. This adrenal gland is made up of two types of tissues, adrenal medulla and adrenal cortex. Okay. Adrenal medulla secretes two types of hormones called as adrenaline and noradrenaline and adrenal cortex secrete hormones called as corticoids. This adrenal cortex has three layers or three parts. First is called as zona reticularis second is zona fasciculata and third is zona glomerulosa adrenaline adrenaline and non adrenaline are called as emergency hormones or fight or flight hormones these are very important during our reflex actions these hormones of adrenal gland help in carbohydrate metabolism balance of water in our body and increasing glucose in blood breakdown of lipids and proteins and the help in rate of respiration and heartbeat and contraction of heart pancreas these pancreas act as both exocrine and endocrine hence they are called as mixed glands they have some cells called as islets of Langerhans there are approximately 1 to 2 million of these cells. These cells are again of two types. Alpha cells and beta cells. Alpha cells secrete glucagon and beta cells secrete insulin. So why glucagon is important to our body? This glucagon is taken up by the liver cells and they stimulate glycogenolysis a process which leads to increasing of the blood pressures. If these glucagon levels are high, it leads to a condition called as hyperglycemia. Hence, this is called as hyperglycemic hormone. Next, beta cells secrete hormones called as insulin. They are, they are a peptide type of hormones. This insulin are taken up by hepatocytes and adipocytes for enhancing glucose uptake and utilizations. This also helps in decrease of the blood glucose levels. If the glucose levels in blood is decreased, it leads to a condition called as hypoglycemia. The simple mechanism of this process is that glucose is converted into glycogen with help of an insulin. This whole process is called as glycogenesis. The prolonged hyperglycemia leads to disease called as diabetes mellitus. Coming to the next gland, testis. This is present in males in the scrotal sacs. Testis is a primary sex organ and an endocrine gland. This testis have a type of cells called as Leydig cells or interstitial cells. These cells produce hormones called as testosterones. This testosterone helps in development of primary and secondary sexual characters in males like beard, moustache, pubic hairs, hoarseness of our voice and all that. Coming to the ovary. A pair of ovaries are located in abdominal region in female. This ovary produces one ovum during each menstrual cycle. This ovary produces one ovum during each menstrual cycle. This ovum secretes two types of hormones, estrogen and progesterone. This estrogen hormone helps in secondary sexual characters development in females and the progesterone helps in 
मिल्क सिक्रीशन ड्यूरिंग लैक्टेशन और ड्यूरिंग प्रेगनेंसी Apart from the glands, endocrine glands, there are some tissues. They also secrete hormones. Heart. In heart, the atrial wall secretes atrial nat natriuretic factor or ANF is a type of a hormone which helps in dilation of blood vessels. Similarly, in the kidney. a type of cells called as juxta glomerular cells they secrete erythropoietin which is very important in formation of red blood cells or rbc in the gastrointestinal tract many hormones are secreted which helps in digestion and reabsorption of food they are gastrin secretin cholecystokinin and gastric inhibitory peptide in this slide we will see the mechanism of hormone action the basic principle of this mechanism is that a hormone binds to target tissue but the process is very complex this target tissue have a type of cells called as target cells okay these target cells have receptors on them these receptors may be on the cell membrane called membrane bound receptors or they may be inside the cell called intracellular receptors or they may be in nucleus called as nuclear receptors what happens is this hormone binds to the this hormone binds to the target cell receptors by forming hormone receptor complex okay it depends upon the type of tissue and the type of hormone acting so uh, this hormone may bind to intracellular receptors or they may bind to membrane bound receptors or they may bound to nuclear receptors by forming a complex called as hormone receptor complex if the hormone is bounded to the membranes or membrane bound receptors they do not enter the target cell they only generate secondary messengers called amp and calcium ions if these hormones are bounded to intracellular receptors they help in regulating gene expression or chromosomal function I hope you are okay with this uh, lesson thank you